It's 7.52 in Ojai, and you're listening to Night Call. Hey everybody and welcome to Night Call, a podcast for your up days and down dogs. I'm Molly Lambert, and I'm in here in Los Angeles with... Tess Lynch only, because Emily is on her way out here as we speak to join us for the first Night Call podcast, Dinner Pod Theater. Dinner Pod Theater. Which, uh, as we're recording, is going to be happening tomorrow, and we hope to see some of you guys there, if not at the podcast Dinner with Magic, then at the after party. Um, and thank you, everybody who bought our shirts. Thank you so much for buying our shirts. Every time you bought a shirt, we were like, oh, yeah. thank you. <laughs> it felt so nice. It did feel nice. And we really appreciate your support. And we will have more things to sell you that we hope you will enjoy. If you have an idea of something that Night Call can imprint our uh, emblems on, let us know. I'm thinking about pens. You said lighters, and I liked that idea. Lighters, but I also said pens because I love finding the, like, weird branded pens that I have collected <laughs> over the course of my life. I have them. Many of them have run out of ink, That's but I true. still I like had, them. I, I had a floaty pen collection Ooh, nice. for many years. That was my one collection. Love the floaty pens. I feel like you don't really see them anymore. Maybe Night Call can bring them back. Maybe we can bring – oh, a Night Call floaty pen would right? be a dream. What would be floating? An uh, alien? Maybe. An yeah. alien head between some kind of New York skyscraper yeah, thing and a palm a tree. Yeah, a palm tree, yeah. Oh. Oh, maybe like a little alien. Or a phone. A little UFO. Yeah. Oh. A, you, an alien on the phone, on a landline phone that drifts <laughs> between points. Oh, this is a great idea. This is true. When, when it's just me and Molly, we tend to get silly vibes. We get real silly. We were talking about... The DJ sets we're going to be doing at the night call party tomorrow at Social Club, which is uh, also it takes takes tikes tikes tikes. I never know uh, that we both might just play the same Steely Dan song that five, we both heard on Jonesy's that we jukebox. We both heard on Jonesy's jukebox last week. Is we're talking about uh, which is FM, the theme song from the movie FM. And the long version and at the that. long version with the strings. Mm-hmm. Did you read the Wikipedia entry about the song? No, tell me. Well, <laughs> it's for a movie called FM, uh-huh. which was apparently a movie about the collapse of freeform radio. And but it was like a Hollywood, like a shitty B movie trying to cash in on like that's the story. Is it's like a radio station banding together against like the commercial forces and like that sounds great. Yeah, it does sound great. I would probably love it. Yeah. It's like a Who was in 78. It? I don't know. I got to look into it. But it was like – the Wikipedia is like the story in which like the DJs band together and like overcome the corporation that's trying to like shut down the Freeform Radio station. Like Freeform Radio had already been like crushed by corporate powers like by that time. Right. And so the Celia Dan song is just like really sarcastic. <laughs> Um, oh, the Dan. About how uh, radio sucked yeah. after that. <laughs> you also mentioned that it sounded like the fake Steely Dan song from Oh Hello. It does sound ex- a lot like Which that. was in my head for like pretty much ever after we saw Oh Hello. Tessa and I saw a pre-Broadway uh, staging of Oh Hello that was at the... Largo, wasn't the it? Largo, yeah. yeah. Um and we saw like the workshop version and we laughed so hard. It was so hard. good. It was so good. The best part of that show is when they – how frequently they acknowledge what it's like to be at theater, which is like, ha, 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 you're trapped and you can't get out and now we have you for three hours. Yeah. And we can do whatever we want. That was the funniest part of it was the joke. There were so many jokes about theater and about like – Okay, like everything gets dark now. A spotlight's on me. <laughs> it was also just weirdly tailored to like all of the things Tess and I think are funny yep. because we are also like uh, old Upper West Side crotchety, crotchety New York, New Yorkers men yeah. in, inside uh, who love Steely Dan. Yep, <laughs> it was made just for us. I, thank you, John Mulaney. Yeah, and thanks, Nick John Kroll. Mulaney and Nick Kroll.
Today's episode of Night Call is brought to you by True Botanicals, non-toxic skincare that actually works. You shouldn't have to choose between skincare that's safe and skincare that works. True Botanicals creates luxury botanical formulas that are as potent as they are pure. Their third-party clinical trials showed their Renew Collection outperformed Creme de la Mer and their Clear Collection outperformed Proactive Plus. And everything they make is verified non-toxic by MadeSafe. Go to TrueBotanicals.com now to get free samples and receive $20 off orders of $40 or more with the code CALL. The three of us got samples from True Botanicals, and I'm actually ordering more of the Renew Cleanser and Radiance Oil because I couldn't believe how good my skin looked after I used them. Both products were super gentle, non-irritating. Even though my face doesn't usually like oils, it was just awesome, and they smelled great. I usually get by okay with the cheap stuff from the drugstore for my face because I'm that kind of gal, but I'm going to splurge on this. I wasn't expecting to love it as much as I did, and I'm going off script saying this, uh, but I'm actually just a fan of True Botanicals. It's really great, and you should try it. Again, go to TrueBotanicals.com now to get free samples and receive $20 off orders of $40 or more with your first purchase with the code CALL. Um, Today, we wanted to talk about a really important topic that we've been kind of circling for a long time, which is sauces. Very important. Uh, We wanted to talk about what are the best sauces. Where where do you fall on sauces, Tess? So listen, I know that, Molly, you're not a mayonnaise fan, but you like aioli. Is that correct? It's true. I've made aioli, and it's – I like it better. If I make it at home, maybe I would even like mayonnaise. If I made it at home, there's something about like you know, what they the, put in it to put it in a jar. But the eggs, I, I get concerned about the eggs. Uh, I think I thought there were eggs in mayonnaise. Uh, there are eggs. There in are eggs. eggs. In I thought mayonnaise. there was dairy in mayonnaise. No, for a really long time. Really? I also, um, when I saw Carvel before Carvel came on our podcast uh, a couple weeks ago, we had brunch and we spent like a good. 25 minutes talking about he was like you know like I know it's not cool to like mayonnaise but like mayonnaise is great and I was like no disagree disagree he also did something really interesting and and good for a brunch which is that he is allergic to eggs Mm -hmm. so he instead assembled a brunch out of other sides so he had a brunch that was like corned beef hash like a hash brown and maybe like a pancake. I was like, ooh, that is very... Yeah, that's it's inventive. It was very... It looked good. Because he could make himself a little roll him up if he you wanted. He also sent me a message yesterday that he was like, hey, I really liked being on the podcast. And he said when he listened to the episode from the following week that he was like talking back to it. And I was like, oh, We're getting him in the fold. Get it to Carvel anytime. Come back, Carvel. Come back tonight, call. You are an official. You're the fourth beetle. You are the fourth beetle. <laughs> um, I have to say that mayonnaise being killed by millennials is awful. It's a travesty. Somebody on Twitter recently um, called out the fact that like when people don't like mayonnaise and they try and put other stuff on their sandwiches, it's beyond disgusting. I think some of the substitutions that he listed were hummus on a just sandwich. Not a good it's not the right texture at all and it's not gonna complement what else is in your sandwich. Pesto, also wrong. I mean there were so many things that just can't replace mayonnaise. I would put all these things on a sandwich over mayonnaise. Hummus? I mean, if it's a pita. But what if it's like a would, club sandwich the, I, with hummus? Uh, okay, the thought of mayonnaise right? and a pita bread just made me like throw up. Oh, Ew. I love it. And uh, tzatziki, which is like mayonnaise adjacent. So the, I know yeah. tzatziki is fine because yeah. tzatziki is yogurt. I have no problem with yogurt. It's just a mayonnaise problem. So it's the fact that it's not dairy. It's like Uncanny Valley it's for like you. It's like the texture. It's like, the, it's like gross. It's just gross. But how is it and any it's, different it's like, from soft butter? If I can taste it, it's like I hate the taste of it. What about tartar sauce? It's that's the exception. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's my thing. Aioli, tartar sauce. If it's in something and I can't taste it, it's like, you know, good direction. Okay, okay. If I notice it, it's bad. I understand. I understand what you're saying. But it's, I mean, in a way, it's like how your body is made up of so much water. Food is made up of so much mayonnaise. But it's like, 
it's become part of the whole. Like you have to just accept that it's there and that you like it. It's this bias that you have against what mayonnaise stands Again, for. It's like, no, it's not. It's like literally sometimes I'll like try something and be like, oh, oh no, there's mayonnaise in this. Oh, like, no. I'm out. Like a dip it ruins a lot of dips for me. Okay, okay, yeah. I mean, I, it's definitely better to err on the side, I think, of yogurt or sour cream in a dip. I bet I could make you a dip with those ingredients, sneak in some mayonnaise, and you'd have no idea. I'm saying if you sneak it in, I have no idea, then it's fine. If it's in like a deviled egg, it's, yeah. maybe it's fine. Deviled if it's eggs. Like mixed up in a yolk, if there's something else to like. So if you make it more mayonnaise by adding yolk. <sighs> but again, it's like something is like swimming in mayonnaise. I'm just like. Well, so swimming in anything's a bad idea other than the sauce they have at Din Tai Fung, which oh, is yeah. the black the vinegar and, and the soy sauce can stay. And, and the ginger. The, I'm just saying there's so many other sauces that are better. I'll Give say, me your isn't, sauces. Isn't mayonnaise like a spread? It's a spread, yeah. It's a spread. <laughs> fair, fair. But it's a it's a part of tartar sauce, which is a sauce. It's true. And but tartar, it's hard because tartar sauce is kind of a dip. Tartar sauce is like its own – it's got its own set of rules. Yeah. It's, you know, you're at the beach probably. No, you don't have to be at the beach to have tartar sauce. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> that good inland tartar sauce brings the beach to you. I like there's no time that I don't want mustard more. What kind of mustard do you like? Just like any kind. Really? Yeah. My parents think I'm crazy because I'm into yellow mustard. I like yellow mustard. They think that's like – like a like a hot dog or something. I think it's trashy people's mustard. They eat the it like is whole grain mustard. mustard. Biscuit. Oh, also we're all boycotting uh, Nathan's hot dogs now. Oh, why? They like gave a lot of money to Trump or something. Oh, OK. Yeah, we are. Um, you know – I feel bad. Somebody on the Facebook group Night Callers, which you should join because it's very lively, was being like, well, what's wrong with fries? And I didn't really have an answer because no, I forgot we don't know. what we was didn't, wrong. We, didn't. we thought maybe there was something no, wrong with fries. We just assumed that because they're a company. Right. So. We're going to clear the brand for now. I think fries are okay. I think fries is fine. Um, so the five mother sauces, I don't know if you have any feelings on these in French cooking. Go on. Bechamel, velouté, espagnol. French tomato sauce that has a name that I forget, and hollandaise. I mean... Are you going to nix hollandaise because it's too much like mayonnaise? No, I like hollandaise. You're such an enigma. <laughs> I don't know where you're coming from half the time. I only ever have it on Eggs Benedict. I've like made it. I feel like I went through a sauce You can make it in the period. microwave. And it's... Mm. No, no, no. But for real, there's this thing. <laughs> if you look, it's from like a legit source and you can make the best hollandaise I'm in the microwave. I'm not against like a white sauce ever, you know? Like I like an Alfredo. There's... I don't like Alfredo. Huh. Uh... Um, I like mustard the most, I think. Mustard does the most work. Limited capacity for mustard. I Did you turn on soy sauce? I love soy sauce. I thought that was your favorite no, sauce. sauce. is my favorite sauce. It's my favorite sauce. Twinsies. Love. But also ponzu. When you have ponzu, all of a sudden you're like, soy sauce is pretty basic. Where do you fall on ketchup? I like ketchup okay, but I do not accept any ketchup but Heinz. Well, Every other ketchup tastes whack. I don't know why. <laughs> it's something. There's some kind right, of though. sweetness. The sugar ratios are off, off on other people's. It's like only good. Hunt's is like the worst thing I've ever tasted in my life. Right. Like Heinz you know, is great. You know when it's off brand. It's like Coca-Cola. Yeah. It's not, you know, you don't want the Pepsi. You don't want that. Can I mention for anyone in L.A. that one of the sauces that I'm really addicted to right now is from Dave's Hot Chicken. And they have like this really... It makes your heart race, though, which is like, I'm not sure why. Because <laughs> there's a lot of salt in it? It must be that, but Remember it's like Remember when I more... drank all that soy sauce? Well, I, was, I, I wasn't was going to bring die. it up, but yeah, you did. You, you drank a bunch of soy sauce, and then you got really concerned that you were going to die. And you, I don't know if you can die from over-salting, but I, I'm addicted to Dave's Hot Chicken, and, I've, and this is not an ad. It should be an ad, because Dave's Hot Chicken is the best thing that's ever happened to my neighborhood. But um, I was having it so much. And you, you get two sliders, and they're huge. And then you get, like, a bunch of tubs of sauces because you take and take. And then you go home, and, like, 15 minutes later, you're sweating. Your heart is well, pounding. Well, I think there's just a lot of salt in everything good. It's true. Uh, I love the Zanku garlic sauce, the Zanku chicken. They have that. It's, like, basically the same thing that you can get at Trader Joe's, the garlic yes, spread. Yes, but I uh, – I don't get it that much because I will just like eat the whole thing yeah. and then have like the the salt sweat. The salt and the garlic. <laughs> it's a very funky, it's a it's funky so sauce. It's so good. Oh, I so went good. to, after this podcast last week, I went to Pita Hut on uh -huh. Fairfax because I was just like, I'm going to walk around and find lunch. And 
the it was the best place. They had like a huge sauce bar. Ooh. It's like a, a Middle Eastern place. It's really good. And then they just had a sauce bar that had like the uh, the yellow mm, sauce. I know what you mean. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. They have it. The salty, tangy yellow sauce. The salty, sauce. tangy yellow sauce. The like herby, delicious green sauce. Mm-hmm. And what also, is the herby, delicious green sauce? I don't know, but we'll find out. Yeah. Um, I think it was all Israeli sauces, mm-hmm. maybe. And uh, and the delicious garlic sauce and tahini. And I was just like, this is what I like the most. Yeah. Is an array. I know. You like to choose. I like to have an array of sauces. Yeah. Well, that's like when you get fried clams and you have the cocktail sauce and the tartar sauce and you can like alternate. See, I always go for the cocktail sauce though in that No, you got to alternate. Yeah. Or because the cocktail sauce, eventually it, it's too... What if you just alternate with the cocktail sauce and like vinegar? The no. Vinegar. You need the like, I like the like pickly, <laughs> <laughs> the pickly smooth. <laughs> you know what I mean? The pickly it's smooth. It's the pickly smooth. Can we get sponsored by Heinz tartar sauce? Seriously. We, no. Well, honestly, Heinz makes the best ketchup, but they do not make the best Who tartar sauce. Who makes the sauce. best tartar sauce? Well, look, You're I'm like, going to take you I on do. a look. I'll tell you a really Me. brief story. No, I don't make, I've tried, but I always want to add Old Bay and Old Bay actually doesn't really belong in a mm. tartar sauce. It belongs on whatever you're dunking in the tartar sauce, but it muddies, it's a muddy sauce when you put it, <laughs> when you dunk that in. Um, no, I think, so Jones, Jones on third, fancy Jones on third, our LA Dean and DeLuca, they have this tartar sauce that's super good. And one time I went there for a fancy lunch and I got like fish and chips and they didn't have the tartar sauce. And did you go like Jack Nicholson? I demanded that. I went crazy and I demanded. You were like, do you have mayonnaise? Yes, exactly. Do you have relish? Put it together. Put it together. They were like, we haven't made it yet. And so I was like, I'll wait. But then I waited for like 45 minutes. <laughs> and it became this awful standoff where I was just like, I just. And it made me realize I was like, all I wanted was just like a vat of that tartar sauce just to dunk you anything didn't in. Fish. You just didn't want the, the fish. Sauce. Just wanted the you sauce. You know what else is good is that conditory dill sauce, which is probably like all mayonnaise. If I've I never had it. that. You had that? No, what's that? Some weird sauce in a jar that my mom got me into because it's probably some like 50s delight. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like a dill sauce that you put with fish and it's really good. I'm like hit or miss with dill. Oh, dill like is dill. dill is what cilantro used to be to me. I I've come like, to terms with cilantro. I like all the herbs. Really? The yeah. I don't, like, I don't like rosemary. Oh, I love rosemary. I'm not into rosemary. It can really ruin if no. you get like the roasted potatoes and too much rosemary. Oh, I love it. I love when the rosemary feels like pine is all needles. Burnt. No, the it's texture. delicious pine needles. Listen, we've got bigger fish to fry. We're talking about Drake and Kim now. Oh, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, a guy on Twitter laid out a theory that um, Kim is Kiki in Drake's "In My Feelings" and that Drake and Kim hooked up. Also that the song 8 out of 10 refers to Drake and Kanye's Kim's 9th and 10 exes, maybe? 9th and 10th? Think about it, because I'm, I'm throwing all this back to you in a second. Um, the lyrics from Drake's verse on sicko mode, that's where the directions between, like, Drake's house and Kanye's house somehow factor in. Um, and Nick somebody Cannon confirmed. Somebody drew a map. Confirmed, yeah, that somebody, was the point. Was somebody drew a map. Here's what I think. Okay. I don't agree that Kim is Kiki. There's no way in Even house. though her family calls her Kiki and yes, Kiki. Yes, she okay. fucking wishes um, because nothing about that song fits with her. It's all about like a down-to-earth girl who... You don't think she's down-to-earth, Molly? No, I do not think she... Uh, prefers Hennessy to champagne. I think she just yeah, likes she's totally champagne. champagne. She is not from the block like she is Jenny. Mm-hmm. And all the other lyric things, I didn't buy any of it. Mm-hmm. I thought it was, they were all reaches, but I also thought it was like a fun journey to yeah. go on. It was a long thread. A long, a long, good sort of silly thing to think about. Um, but I also don't rule out the idea that they maybe had sex. All right. You're taking a very neutral stance on this. Well, the only thing that seemed at all potentially like it made any sense was the thing of like, oh, Drake had the song that he couldn't put out because right. it would like destroy Kanye. Because he, he admitted to, he was like, I have a diss that like, yeah. Would, yeah. And I think a lot of people assumed that it was maybe like outing Kanye mm-hmm. and that that was why it like he didn't release it because it would have been like a bad, a bad look for him right. to do that, you know, uh, anyway. Um, 
But then people were saying, no, it's because it was about how he fucked Kim. Mm -hmm. And then I like that Kanye called Drake insensitive because he sent purple demon emojis. (laughs) <laughs> it's like it is insensitive. You don't bring the demon into somebody's I home. I know. You don't want that. Uh, do you think they'll comment on it publicly? You know, I kind of think it's all publicity from Drake's end. I mean, I think Kim is loving it. Of course. That's, well, she's denied it She's on Instagram. Did she? I think on Instagram she said, like, not true. End of story. Okay. But End of story. But she loves being... Oh, yeah. This is, like, the best thing that could possibly happen for her. Do you think like, she genuinely enjoys it? Or do you think she yes, enjoys I it? I think the only thing she knows is, like, attention. Yeah, and, but like, do you think part of her hates attention. it? Um, I think Kylie hates it a lot more uh-huh. openly than Kim does. I think Kim has been... She was, like, probably the first one, you mm-hmm. know? So she got probably the most, the most attention anyway, yeah. you know? And I think also, uh, you know, she's been a married lady for, she's got some kids now. She's How got, long like, have they been married? She's, you know, she's ready for her, like, Madame Bovary phase, for yeah. sure. You know, I can see that happening. Uh, it's been a while. It's time is so elastic when it comes to the Kardashians. Time is elastic, and uh, she's definitely, definitely not Kiki. That song's definitely not about her. All right. Well, Night Callers weigh in. Night callers weigh in. Give what us a call this... at two four zero four six night and tell us what you think about what Kim and Drake have been up to or not up to. I just feel like if Drake were going to pursue one of the Kardashians, maybe he, there's also rumors he's slept with other Kardashians. What other Kardashians? I think there's a rumor he hooked up with Kylie and or Kendall. Oh, yeah? I could see Courtney. What about all of them? I feel like he and Courtney could really get along. Um, I had a really uh, life-affirming experience where I was at uh, the computer store and a kid asked how to use YouTube. What do and you mean? And then he was like, asked the guy who worked there, like, hey, hey, how do I get to YouTube on here on this free computer? And uh-huh. he pulled it up and then he typed in a Nicki Minaj video. And then when I walked past, he, like, closed it. You're kidding. No, and I was like, oh, my God, that still happens. Oh. Kids are still watching music videos to get horny in, like, weird public places (laughs) and then being embarrassed when somebody looks at it. How old was this person? It was a child. Oh, okay. They were a child. They were, like, probably, like... Maybe they can't watch it on their home computer, so they were, like... Too sexy. Too sexy. Ugh. Um, I thought that was funny. Puritanical upbringing. I think we should take a night email. Hey, guys. Not a call nor at night. It's a beautiful sunny day here in Europe. Lucky you. But a fitting night call topic, I think. I just listened to your episode with Darcy, who mentioned smudging and getting rid of ghosts. I also just watched the excellent film A Dark Song about a harrowing but intriguing occult ritual. I am fascinated, but so far I've never taken part in a ritual, seance, Ouija session, or anything like that. Many of my friends did, especially the women who seemingly all had teenage Wiccan stories. Am I missing out? Did the patriarchy keep me from having occult fun? Have you ever been in some sort of ritual, and what would you or your listeners recommend to start with? Hope my favorite podcasters can help me there. All the best, Christian. Tess and I were in a coven. We were. We've, <laughs> We've talked about it We've before. We've covered this. Yeah. Coven. Mm-hmm. It's because the craft came out. It is. We did astral traveling. Did is astral a tra- is a great way to start. Astral traveling. Um, we just, you know, it's also, it's a, it's a weird spooky time in your body. Mm-hmm. It is. <laughs> spooky mysteries spooky of ladyhood. Mysteries. You're very powerless and you're just like, ooh, wouldn't it be cool if I could have any power at yeah. all over anything? Just like in the craft. Do you still dabble in woo-woo? Um, I'm not. You were just saying you did a tarot reading a couple I days ago. I recently did a tarot reading on myself. You know, we're Californians. Yeah. <laughs> um... Uh, I, I waver, you know, because... You've been to some witchy parties. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I went to a witch party like last week. I was trying to draw this out of you naturally, but you oh, put me yeah. in the position. I went to a moon ritual. Mm-hmm. I was just thinking I have a very high tolerance for stuff like that, especially when it's like done with a sense of humor. I think yeah. it's like the more humorless it is, the more likely I am to not be into it. Also, right. if it costs money, then it's probably bad. Yeah. Is my feeling about those things. But you also seem to remember much of the tarot. Because well, when I was I like, like I oh, Molly, I'm so tarot. nervous, you well, said, well, death reversed well, is so, not a death test. Uh, Elena Smith, friend of the podcast, has done some tarot readings on me in recent years. 
How uh, were they? That were great, very yeah. great. Um, you know, I don't like seek it out constantly, but if somebody is like, "Hey, would you like me to read your tarot cards?" Then I'll probably do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it can be a little been, scary though. To it get can in there. be scary. Well, I think I've had this deck since college, and. Uh, I haven't taken great care of it. So every so often I feel guilty and like sit it in the sun or the moonlight just to kind of like let all the bad vibes go. Because once I stored it in a dirty purse for like three years and then I found it and I was like, ooh, it had like gum on it. But I was like, I can't throw away this deck because then that seems like a bad idea. In fact, I can probably never get rid of it. What do you do? Burn it? That seems worse. (laughs) You could probably just like put it to sleep. What does that mean? Uh, and there's also like a, a superstition that somebody you're not supposed to buy your own deck. Someone's supposed to buy, buy it, it for you. you. Maybe someone will buy you a new deck. Well, I have to deal with this one first. I bought this deck. It's treated me really well. And so a couple of nights ago, I was like, oh, I should bust out the old tarot cards. They've been sitting in a bowl of crystals. And uh, and I did. And it was and it, it was great. Also, because it's nice to do something tactile and like think about like the circumstances of life without looking at a screen or even thinking about sure. anything that exists on a screen. Um, and I, I think tarot is a good way to get into occult rituals. Well, yeah. My first uh, paid writing job was in high school. I wrote for a deck of cards that my brother's boss was designing. I forgot about this. What? <laughs> I forget what it was called, but he had like designed a deck of cards and he needed like captions. And I wrote the captions for them. They were like a different set of like Jungian archetypes. Ooh. And also he was the manager of like the underground uh, hip hop record store. Oh. <laughs> I want that tarot deck. That my that brother amazing. worked at. Um, yeah, I think I like had one. It was just sort of like it was like a different type of like card fortune telling that he had invented. That yeah. Was like, his passion project. Well, a lot of people make their own tarot decks, and I think it, it ends up taking forever because I think there are seventy-eight cards. Well, maybe I think this was up. like he had he had just made up his own system. Oh, okay. So but he was really fun. It was its it. own game. I it mean, that's a little thing. too loosey goosey. I it's think a different type of fortune telling. Um, they have a deck that's like Alice in Wonderland based. That's really popular. I could see the benefits too of doing your own deck so that it's like the meaning of the card is more clear to you beyond just being like a fun way to kind of do ASMR activities of like, you know, doodling around and practicing (laughs) magic and stuff. Well, you can kind of cheat by like making things more explicit, like easier to read for you. My friend uh, Emma, who's going to be at the Night Call live show, is a magician now. She's a magician in training and she's been doing card tricks with a deck of cards. And man, what if we all get really into card tricks? It's so cool. It's so complicated. Everyone I know who has done card tricks like that kind of magic it just i'm like wow how much did you have to look so easy make it look so easy i mean there but there are two different kinds of magic well right what if we become both kinds can you do both because it's not one kind of like blowing the lid off the other no i think one one's like creating illusion and one's like believing in illusion you're either like a skeptical cynical magician what if one is mayonnaise and one is tartar sauce okay okay (laughs) <laughs> That's fair. Which is the tartar sauce? The witchy one is the tartar sauce, I think. We'll find out. If you have thoughts on this, you can also email us at nightcallpodcast at gmail.com. Yeah. What is your favorite occult store test? It's probably the same one as me. Well, I love the psychic guy. Yeah. I was going to say psychic guy. Psychic guy is the best. We were talking recently because I had bought um, some sage. I, as everyone can clearly tell, I'm in, I'm in you know, disarray spiritually well, so i've been smudging turmoil. yeah yeah i i was i debbie downered you on some well now i feel like i have to actually go all the way and like grow my own sage well, tell, which will tell be tell people better. why they shouldn't buy sage from bougie places. which is true and listen i did buy mine from a bougie place but at least it's like an independently owned bougie place does that make it better was it house of intuition no it was wacko it was so plant wacko um I mean, I I really like those people, but they are doing something bougie by co-opting. So the bougie, you know, spiritual places selling this sage are basically running the mom and pop in their forever stores that are selling. It's true. It's true. They are. 
they're taking all the sage, right? They're ta- oh, oh, yeah, that was it, is that they're, like, taking all the resources of it the was, sage. Yeah, it was that the sage is, like, being, like, pir- pirated or something. I mean, it's being harvested. Sage wars. Off, like, like, holy, like, sacred land, maybe. That's Any no good. way it's being stolen. Oh, so that was, it's a dual-edged it's thing. A du- it's, and yeah. then I said, I also feel like it's sold at all these stores that are, like, gentrifying botanicas yeah. out of neighborhoods and so it makes me angry on that level also cuz like- also sage i was not pleased with the smell of sage i've i've done it before and then i forget that there's the top scent is like the smoky herbal scent but then the under scent is like a bo scent well, that's a lot of hippie smells. Palo Santo. That's all the hippie smells yeah. you're talking about. You're going to remind you. I like hippie you. smells. It's just going to remind you. Of B.O. Of B.O. Because it's going to remind you of like spaces, hippie spaces. Yeah. I don't know, though. I don't really think it was just that association. I think I was actually Every smelling. Every time I smell Nag Champa, it just transports me to the Santa Monica Third Street promenade. Yes. And being like... 12 and being like what is that adult and now smell? the promenade is so different oh yeah, yeah. well you know nog champa smells the same it's true and it some things change it's, nog champa smells like adult i remember you didn't you buy like a weed incense yes in seventh grade i did <laughs> that would have been eighth grade you're trying to give me more credit like she was young uh, she grade, didn't know no grade. it was in eighth grade and you didn't smoke weed yet but you were like no but I'm i was eager to buy try this yeah. weed incense and freak out my hippie parents. Yeah. I'm sure they would have been terrified. Uh, oh, how far we've come. Today's episode of Night Call is brought to you by Fab Fit Fun, a seasonal subscription box delivered four times a year, packed with full-size fashion, beauty, home, fitness, and wellness products for just $49.99 a box. We got our FabFitFun boxes a while ago and had a whole text chain going about the contents. Some of them were pretty straightforward. There was a great body wash, a lip palette, makeup bag, but others like the Ferreo Luna scrub brush and massager were things we'd never seen before. It was great to discover new stuff, and we actually got a chance to use them more than once since these aren't little tiny trials. That also means that the boxes are really good value since a lot of these individual items cost more than the whole box. The fall box has a bunch of great stuff like two Glam Glow bubble sheet masks for scaring your family and taking care of your skin, beauty blenders, tea towels, and a few selections from a long list of products including Silo Cobra Bluetooth wireless earbuds, an Alfred teapot or French press coffee brewer, luxury lipsticks and face creams, even a Catherine Malandrino umbrella. It's great because you can anticipate a lot of great products as well as looking forward to a few fun surprises. So sign up for FabFitFun today to get your fall box. The FabFitFun fall box is in limited supply and they always sell out. Use our code NIGHTCALL to get $10 off your first box. Go to FabFitFun.com to sign up and start getting the box for a life well lived. Use promo code NIGHTCALL to get $10 off your first box. That's over $200 for only $39.99. Go to FabFitFun.com, use our code NIGHTCALL and get $10 off your first FabFitFun box. Listen, Molly, you sent me an interesting tidbit about a museum I'd never heard of. Yes, somebody, I believe a couple of night callers have sent us something about the Vent Haven Museum. It's in Kentucky. In Kentucky, mm-hmm. which is a museum where ventriloquist dummies go to die. It's a retirement place for ventriloquist dummies. Community. And then we were talking about this beforehand, whether ventriloquist dummies are scarier than haunted dolls, and if so, why? So they are, (laughs) is what we decided. (laughs) Basically, there is... So as a fan of the Twilight Zone... You were like the puppet aspect makes it scarier because puppets like already appear to come to life sometimes. So the idea that they would like come to life when they're not being manipulated by a human. It's also the expression that ventriloquists make when they when their mouths are closed but they are speaking through their Freaks dummies. You out. Yeah, dude. Everything about ventriloquism is a little scary mm-hmm. and also uh Darcy Wilder's dad has gotten into ventriloquism and no. she's been posting a lot of uh, videos of her dad doing ventriloquism that are really funny. And How did he recently decide to get into ventriloquism? That's what all her posts are like. Right. I can't believe this is the thing. <laughs> Maybe it's her uncle, and I think it's her dad. Yeah. She's like, he's bringing the doll places. Well, there's that great Freaks and Geeks episode 
about ventriloquism. Tell me. Oh, I don't remember the, it. One of the best episodes. It's about a kid whose parents are having marital turmoil and then he like uses the ventriloquist dummy at like a big party for all their friends to like talk about the parents like marital problems (laughs) that sounds amazing and horrible he's like dad's having sex with his assistant it's so cringy and good it's a really good episode there is a lot of good art about ventriloquism but I was going to say earlier that what really poisoned me about the dummies was um, there were these two Twilight Zone episodes, and I think one of them is called The Dummy, and then the other one is Caesar and Me, which is Jackie Cooper. Uh, but in one of them, it's like the dummy bites the guy, the ventriloquist, and then the guy's like, I need a new dummy, and he gets a new dummy. And, like, the old dummy gets mad, and then I don't want to spoil the end. Oh, I'm not going to spoil it. You should watch that one. It's good. And then the other one is, I think it's, like, the dummy is telling this this guy who's broke, and he's trying to, like, make it as a ventriloquist, and he's not that good. And the dummy's like, just rob a bank. Come on, rob a bank. And the guy's like, I don't want to rob a bank. He's like, come on, do it. And he convinces the guy to rob a bank. And then the guy eventually gets caught, and there's, like, the the girl who lives next door or whatever – and the dummy then like tries to rope her in and he's like, hey, I, li- I like your hip attitude. <laughs> Maybe you should like – Also rob a bank. Kill, no, kill your aunt with poison darts. So I was just like it, – it, early on I was like, wow, these dummies are diabolical. And in this museum, there's 900 of them and they have ones that spit and smoke and do all sorts of crazy stuff. I mean it sounds like a very scary place to be. Yeah. Just imagining a room full of ventriloquist dummies is very scary. You're making such a strong no face. It honestly, and I'm like, you're in the middle of Kentucky, and you go there for the convention. Sounds like a great horror movie. It does. It kind of reminded me of the Black Mirror finale. Yeah, of like yeah, the yeah. Scary museum. Museum. I like. Yeah. I like a scary museum. But it's true. It's like you don't want to feel an actual danger for your life. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know. The, the dummy – like I looked at a Pinterest board of ventriloquist dummies and like when you see a lot of them, <laughs> it's really intense. It's no joke. They're expressions. Well, how do you feel when you see just a lot of dolls? Not great, but not, not great, quite that but not bad. Not as bad as like I feel like so many of the things I know about Twilight Zone episodes came from watching Simpsons episodes that made yeah. jokes about – like Treehouse of I think Horror. There's a Treehouse stuff. of Horror about maybe the Treehouse of Horror though is not a ventriloquist dummy. There's got to be a ventriloquist dummy one. We should do a whole episode devoted to Treehouse of Horror. I stopped pretty early on with the Treehouse of Horror. I don't know why. Like I always looked forward to them because it's legitimately so frightening. It's on. Mean? I think probably. Yeah. The, well, because again, because the Twilight Zone episodes they were ripping on were so scary. Like yeah. the To Serve Man one, that one gave me nightmares. To Serve Man, for some reason, wasn't that scary to well, me. Well, the Simpsons, ver- the Kang and Kodos To Serve Ooh. Man one gave me nightmares because something about Kang and Kodos is so scary. Yeah. Uh, give us all your thoughts on ventriloquist dummies at 24046 night. Also, if you're enjoying the podcast... Uh, would you please review, rate, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts? And Molly, before we wrap up, do you think we have time for a night call? Yeah, let's do a night call. All right. Hi, night call. This is Chris calling from Boston. Um, so I had a question about ghosts. Um, so a friend of mine from college has a sister who is a medium and uh, sees ghosts, uh, can communicate with them, even has a little girl um, living in her house who died there, and she sees them, she can follow them, she can hear them. Um, but what I thought was interesting about some of her stories is that one of her stories involved a Scantron test, um, insofar as um, my friend's younger sister would show up to her high school, and she never had to study for st- Scantron test because she could just put her finger over the proper letter, and it would get warm on the correct answer. Um, and I assume this was like the little girl giving her the advice, but my question is, are ghosts all smart? Um, or are some ghosts, like if you were alive an idiot, do you die an idiot? Um, or are they all knowing? Um, just thought this would be, um, a good discussion topic. Um, love you ladies. Uh, enjoy your day. Bye. I think, uh, ghosts are as smart as they were in life. I don't think you become all knowing when you're a ghost, but there might be something, I mean, like, I do think vampires tend to be smart because they've lived for so long. 
Those aren't ghosts. No, but they've accumulated. But there's something about, like, if you're immortal, like, you accumulate a lot. Well, they're old. Right. They're wise. Right. Listen, though, here's the, ghosts, the deal. Ghosts, I imagine, are, like, frozen. Ghosts are invisible and they're everywhere. So I don't think a ghost <laughs> has to be that smart because within a test setting, for instance, the ghost could easily know what teacher this girl had, go to the teacher's house, see her making the test, or go to the, like, the ERB Enterprises LTD and just be like, oh, okay, so, like, little Cindy's going to be taking this test. Like, I'm just going to write down on my invisible piece of paper the answers. And then it's, like, it's Damn, just access. ERB. Yeah. What a weird thing for a ghost to use their their powers for. I think It's maybe, a great thing. I think maybe your sister's just smart. I mean, wait, is it his sister or his friend's sister? His friend, the sister. The sister. The sister could be smart. The sister could be playing kind of a long con on you. But I think— I like to believe in ghosts that are helpful that way. Study well, buddies. I also feel like uh, Scantron type tests are all like a scam. So they're scamtrons. They're scamtrons, <laughs> um, and like what they reward, like you know, they don't reward intelligence. Wait a second, you're talking about a different. So a Scantron test is just a multiple choice. Question. Yeah, but the SATs are, like, notoriously bad. Yes, the SATs are bad, but it depends on who's writing the test. I mean, you can't right. fault something just for having a, a multiple, multiple choice. choice. I can't right? say all multiple choice tests are bad. You can't. Why? How could you? It depends on the question. Well, I think they're they're not as – I like those open answer tests. Well, yeah, of course you like the open – because anything you can – you can't bullshit a multiple choice test, no, so they suck. No, you can bullshit a multiple choice Molly, test. Molly, how? I will tell you all the ways because I was an SAT tutor. <laughs> oh, please tell me. Um, It's process of elimination, y'all. But, I mean, there's still a right answer. You're not bullshitting. You're just, like, finding a, a quicker shortcut. But it's, like, shortcut. it's easy to – there's – it's easy to scam because it doesn't – it rewards your ability to take the test. It doesn't reward your, like, intelligence. intelligence. Yeah. Right. But, I mean, any so test – So maybe ghosts are good at taking multiple choice tests. Yes. Well, it would be really difficult oh. for a ghost to guide her oh. through. Yeah. I just want to say, we can talk about our last topic. Is the song booed up about a ghost? I want it to be so badly. Have you listened to it since I suggested this and thought about how it sounds like it's about a ghost now? I tried, but it was too hard. <laughs> like, give me your thesis again. I just was listening to My Boo by Ghost Town DJs, and I was like, oh, Ghost, ghost Town, Town, My Boo. And then I was like, I think Johnny, my boyfriend, actually said it. He was like, yeah. what if the song's about a ghost? Well, I like the fact that Ghosted has entered the lexicon like being ghosted it's such a good and evocative term so it kind of makes sense that like booed up it's like everything now has to be a little ghosty booed up is like if the ghost doesn't ghost you they like stay they with stay you. They haunt you yeah it's being haunted the opposite of ghosting is haunting i love the verb haunt when it's like not about ghosts you know like you've been just like haunting this or haunting Maybe that like, you just replace the term dating with haunting with haunting i love it <laughs> we've been we're mutually haunting yeah we're haunting but we're not exclusively haunting each other <laughs> <laughs> we're free to haunt free to haunt wherever we're roaming haunters well Wow, this is great. This has been a good pod. This has been a cool jazz pod, just like we we used to have at cool. Booties, Booties, cool, Jazzy, Jazzy Booties pod. And we're also so excited to see Emily tomorrow night yeah. for the party. Emily, please don't be mad at us for talking about sauces for so long. Yeah, get ready to talk about answer some <laughs> calls about sauces. Next we're gonna time. do it. Please bring <laughs> us your sauce calls. Thank you for listening. Thanks for listening. See you next week. <laughs>